the button's red now. Recording? We're recording. Nice. <laughs> How's everyone doing tonight? Doing great. Doing great. Beautiful evening. Sunny. Sunny. 70. Light breeze. Perfect summer day here in Rhode Island, yep. right? Like usual. And, and we finally have Liz Bison. <laughs> I Surface know. <laughs> it took long enough. <laughs> this has been a high school dream of mine. <laughs> like, actually, because everybody that I grew up swimming with always guarded at Gansett, but I never could because I was traveling in the summer yeah. for meat. So 15-year-old Elizabeth is very excited right now. <laughs> high school having. dream of Liz. Thanks, <laughs> right? Not yeah. of ours, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's good to be back during the summer. Yes, as absolutely. Uh, and you just got back from Switzerland, right? Yes, I was on a trip, half work, half play. Um, but after that trip, I'm pretty much home the whole summer. So I get to guard with these guys for the rest of the summer, nice. which is really exciting. How do you guys feel about that? Oh, we're so happy to have her <laughs> on the team. I've only messed up a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all do. She's not messed Fair up enough. anything. Yeah. <laughs> We've re- we've recruited her for years, so it's nice to finally have her on board. Yeah, yeah. I hear in. you're a pretty good swimmer, though. I'm okay. That's yeah. pretty much all I bring to the table. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else I rely on them for. <laughs> right on. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's good to have you guys here. We're back in Narragansett for the 12th animal, annual, not animal, Waterman Eco Challenge. It's good to have everyone back. This is the third time we've been doing a little <laughs> broadcast about it. So I think it's important to go back to last year's Waterman Eco Challenge, do a little bit of a recap, and then look forward to what we're going to see this year. What do you guys think? Last year. Amazing. As always, right? Yeah, as always. A little, um, little bit of a rain hiccup. We did. It was actually, surprisingly, the first time in last year was the 11th, so the first time in 11 years where we actually – had to move the date uh, due to weather that that had never happened before. So, you know, we pushed it a day ahead from Saturday to Sunday, uh, got it off. It was an amazing event. And also the first having Liz at Waterman Eco Challenge last year. And um, obviously the energy that you bring, she brings with her, just elevated the day, made it that that much more incredible and, and special and having along the keel there for the first time doing a live broadcast um, you know just really oh, yeah. got a live car- <laughs> concert that's on a motorcycle that's yeah. impressive yeah. I thought when I first heard that it was Cindy Lauper girls just want to have fun but anyway. <laughs> um, it was just an amazing day like ha- having those two new elements to it um, just just enhance the experience all the way around and every year we we try really really hard to improve and enhance the day and make it you know even better than it was the year before and so that's always our goal and um it was it was great it was great last year yeah well i think you nailed it i mean definitely um you know from when i first we first kind of met and got to do the first broadcast to being on the beach last year and doing it live was awesome. And, uh, you know, even though there was a little bit of a rain delay, the, that day turned out to be phenomenal. Like it was like bright blue, clear skies. Who was the little girl that ran across the finish line? I feel like, um, I heard, I don't remember her name, but she had to have been about 14 years old. And although she was kind of on the tag end, she was crushing it. And I think that's the coolest part about Water Miko Challenge is that it's for everyone. You know, it's it's kind of like the ocean is is this um, equalizer, right? And Liz, I know you probably can, can <clears throat> attest to that, just being in the swim world and Dave being a lifeguard for so long. And, you know, it's, it's something that I think brings everyone down to baseline and to have a challenge of sorts here in Narragansett Beach. I mean, it just enhances it in my opinion so i think the the big thing with the eco challenge is it's you're challenging yourself Mm -hmm. uh, obviously there's some people out there who want to win it but i think for most of the contestants it's you're challenging yourself like i want to i want to finish this race and for a lot of for a lot of people who participate they've never done a a, a distance on the paddleboard or a swim like this so it is a it, it is a challenge for them to just finish and they're so excited when they cross that finish line yeah it's just so nice to see them coming up the beach and like you said, crushing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah, and and it's something that you know is a great reflection of like the community here in Narragansett. And you know, I, I think just going around real quick and you know 
everyone has such an integral part into the Water Manico Challenge. You know, Brian kind of bringing it to life 13 years, well, 12 years ago. And, you know, Liz, your community here in Rhode Island and being an Olympic swimmer and your, your you know, Block Island swim that you did. And Dave, you've been, you know, a staple here in Narragansett Beach. So it's it's really cool to see a community come together, not only just for a challenge, but for a great cause, too. So what is, we're doing it for the scholarship. Brian, do you want to kind of touch sure. on the, the scholarship a little bit? Yeah, and, and, you know, in a perfect world, there'd probably be like a dozen chairs at least right. here because there's so many people that come together to make that event what it is and um, and make it special. And it is, it's all about the community here, um, community on the beach, the open water swim community, and everyone just coming together and kind of gravitating around that day. Um, and as as Dave mentioned, it's, you know, even the most novice or inexperienced people, you know, the, those are the ones that everyone's really rallying behind because, you know, the most fierce competitors out there and they're just so stoked to see new people enjoying the ocean that they love and, you know, the swim and the paddle that, that they beast out. And now mm-hmm. here's this, you know, really stoked young person or maybe even an older person and whatever. They're just out there having a great time and everyone's there to support them and cheer them on and bring them across the finish line. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone there is it waits for the for the last person to, to come through. And that person usually gets a bigger applause than the first mm-hmm. person that crosses. And that that's what makes, I think, the day so special. Um, 100%. Yeah. And, and, and it really is um, quite exemplary of what Janice Causey, Mama C, embodied um, here in Narragansett and on the beach. And she was... Uh, the event is is put on in her honor every year and um, raises funds for the scholarship in her name, the Janice Clausey Memorial Art Scholarship in Narragansett High School. And Mama C was just such a an incredible um, bright light for so many people, young people, <clears throat> be it in school, um, really kind of inspiring them and guiding them and reinforcing them to chase their dreams and follow mm. their passions, whatever they are. And here on the beach, just, um, you know, she was, she was the biggest supporter of, of Gansett surf rescue. She was the biggest supporter of water Manico challenge. She loved it. She was out there every year. Um, and she just kind of lived for the day and was so, so stoked on it. So, um, the energy of the day truly represents who, who she is and who she was and what she meant to so many people. So it's, it's really an honor that we're able to put the day on in her name and contribute to the scholarship um, for, you know, for young people um, in her name and in her honor. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I mean, it's <clears throat> nothing better to have an awesome day, but then to also have a cause behind it too. But I think there's also some other smaller causes that are, you know, just as important like ocean safety, ocean safety and, you know, getting people outside and getting them active and, you know, health awareness. So, you know, Dave being, you know, your profession, like, can you speak a little bit about just, you know, being an athlete here in Narragansett training here, kind of being in and amongst this community of athletes, like, you know, Liz and Brian and everyone else that comes to the water meter challenge. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a fantastic event as Brian alluded to. And I think, um, Brian's vision of this was his love of the ocean as lo- as well as all of our uh, uh, teammates on uh, Gansett Surf Rescue is like, how can we share this with a bigger audience? And uh, Brian uh, had this vision when stand-up paddle boarding was just in its infancy on the East Coast. And uh, and then it expanded into a swim event and, and, and it continues to grow. And it's it's great to be able to, t- to take this beautiful location of Narragansett and, and share these natural resources with a group of people. And, you know, Brian's passion for this stuff uh, is what his vision and his passion is, has grown into this event. He reeled me in <laughs> several years ago and I was all on board. You know, like I said, this is great. This is, this is a great event. I want to be as involved as I can be. And, and I've been able to do that. It's been fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Are you training for it yet? Uh, well, I'm busy working that day. So. <laughs> no, no, Dave. <laughs> Excuse. With, with, without Dave, there is no water. Go challenge, That's true. So. That's very true. But, you know, I think, um, you know, Liz, when we talk about your experience in the swim world and whatnot and community, um, you know, last year, 
the community really got behind you, you know, with, you know, your swim to block Island and representing your dad. And, you know, what did it mean to kind of be at the water Nico challenge and, and do the swim and kind of have that community around, around you? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, that's just Rhode Island as a whole, but especially mm-hmm. Narragansett and having grown up here, knowing that I had the support of not just Brian and Dave and like everybody there, but the random people that we're talking about that, maybe this was their gateway into loving the ocean Mm -hmm. and living a fitter and healthier life and finally getting introduced to a swim or a paddle that they would have never done before. And for me to be able to be there and witness that, it it kind of brings me back into why I started swimming. And Mm -hmm. that was because I grew up in the ocean state and I loved the ocean. And my mom and dad were like, you have to be safe. You have to know how to swim if we're going to go to the beach. And so for some people, just being there is the actual win Mm -hmm. and it's I mean I never met Mama C but and last year was my first eco challenge but if it's anything like you're describing her I mean last year was the epitome of this woman and it's just so cool that although I never met her I can obviously get the vibe and what she stood for and who she was as a human and that's just again a testament to the Rhode Island and Narragansett community so it's, it's really special for me to be a part of that and you know even though I actually signed up for the paddle this year. <laughs> Did you really? Which I'm excited for. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I'll definitely be doing the swim. I need to work on my paddling. Um, but even that, like for me, that's a challenge. Yeah. I'm not a paddler. I don't mm-hmm. stand up paddleboard. I don't prone. Well, I prone paddle a little now that I'm guarding, but it's a challenge. And that's, I mean, Waterman Eco Challenge. Yeah. Might as well challenge myself. Like get out there, take yourself out of your comfort zone. That's how you grow. And so, For me to be able to do it in a safe environment, too, Mm -hmm. I think that was one thing that I took away from my swim to Block Island last year was I can't even imagine how much logistics go into the swim and the paddle. And then having to change it because of a rain date, Mm -hmm. making sure that all of your volunteers and workers are still committed to do it the next day. like. I can't even imagine just the stress that Brian you <laughs> had to deal with last year. So yeah, it's it takes a village, and we definitely have that here. Yeah, but that's a great point. Like it, you just made a, a fantastic point to say, like, all right, well, there's a rain date, but then all of a sudden everyone's like, oh yeah, no, I'm gonna be there no matter what. Like it, there's a commitment there, yeah. and there's that team, there's that community. What is it about a the Waterman community, and then b and more importantly the Rhode Island community because it seems as though Rhode Island being the ocean state, there's a lot of states, you know, Hawaii has a great waterman community. Florida has a waterman community, but Rhode Island, there's something special. There's like that Yankee ingenuity is there. There's that commitment to, you know, being here. Right. And I think the waterman eco challenge is really kind of the antithesis of that. And, you know, I guess, Brian, like when you think of Rhode Island coastline, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Well, for me, it's Narragansett beach. I mean, that's the first thing that comes to my mind, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, no, I think, you know, anywhere coastal where, where people live by the ocean and really feel that connection to it, spend their lives there, um, it's their home, It's it means everything to them. And, you know, I th- this whole event really, as, as Dave touched on, was based around raising awareness to ocean and sun safety, Mm -hmm. um, but ocean safety and creating an environment, as Liz touched on, that's really safe for people to get out and enjoy, experience the ocean, maybe to a level that they have not yet before, um, but having the knowledge that and the comfort and the trust that there's a dedicated team out there that is holding it down and has their back and is out there and will make sure that everything is managed the way it needs to be managed. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the safety is, is of utmost, um, um, priority for us. And there's an enormous team Narragansett surf rescue and, and even some extended Narragansett surf rescue alumni and, um, just people close to the, to the team that put a ton of effort and energy into ensuring that that day goes off, um, incredibly safely and that all of our contingency plans are built and mm-hmm. and we work really really closely with Narragansett fire department um you know and, and just to ensure that everything is dialed in and we take we take that incredibly seriously and that day is sort of a way for Narragansett surf rescue to showcase you know what we do on a day-to-day basis for this community and for that beach and how seriously we take it and just kind of put it on on display and you know and and ramp it up so that people can get out there and 
and have this amazing experience. Yeah, it it really is incredible to see all of those pieces come together and, and the logistics that go into it. And, you know, but not only that, but the uh, the amount of, you know, vendors and community right. that rallies not only just on the surf side, but also to, you know, let's say you're walking down the beach and you just want to learn more, right? Yep. Or let's say you want to grab you know, some nuts and more or a product there, something that's new. Like you guys have really made it not just, just for the waterman, but for the entire community. Right. So that's kind of the interesting part where it's kind of like this big beach party. Yeah. If you will. Yep. So what kind of vendors are we having this year? Well, we have our amazing legacy sponsors that return every year. Um, fortunately, and it's such a, such a great group. We have nuts and more, um, as the co-title sponsor, University Orthopedics, major sponsor for us, Calvino Law, um, the Calvino family is very close to the Narragansett Surf Rescue family. Uh, we have IMZ Swimwear, who's with us and been with us and is back every year. Um, we have Costa Olakai, um, who return every year, and, and Olakai on behalf of Shades, local vendor here in, in the pier. Warm Winds uh, will be on site a, Again, legacy perennial uh, sponsor, and just a number of other local yeah, local the, businesses. Now River Kayaks, now River Kayaks, uh, South County, uh, South County Dermatology, Doctor Dyer, yeah, yeah. and the, it just so many. And then other other businesses that contribute. They're not necessarily there that day on site, but they're contributing with product in the swag bags and product in the prize packs. And, mm-hmm. um, it's just the community just really, really, really embraces the day and and has such a huge part in making it what it is yeah the the vendor village is great to stroll through and there's just so much uh information there for just uh patrons of the beach or people who are coming to watch the event maybe not participating uh liz was great last year she was a a great liaison and she went to all the different vendor tents and and visited and said hello and took pictures and it really got the you know the the vibe was really great people were just so excited to be there and to meet Liz, to go to the tents and meet the vendors, get some free samples of different things, get yeah. advice on different stuff. It was, uh, it's a great, uh, it's a great event. Yeah. Now, Liz, were they, were they more interested in your swimming or your, your appearance on Survivor? Oh, <laughs> well, this event definitely swimming, but it was awesome. Like the connections that I made, like Dave hooked me up with an awesome university orthopedics ad. Like I'm Z, I'd never met Katie Imesweiler before. And now I'm like staying at her place in the DR going on really? surf trips. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's, it's such an amazing networking event and meeting people. And they're all about the same thing. Just yeah. like that good vibe being on the beach on a beautiful day, enjoying it. It it really is like a market. I mean, you can go to any vendor and I mean the goodie bag that I got because I won the swim for the women's (laughs) division. I had like so much raw element stuff, warm wind stuff. Like you don't skimp on that. I I was really excited about that. So yeah, it's like, it's such a good day. It's it's a day that you don't want to miss whether you're participating or not. It does not matter. There's something for you there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Now, think about last year. What was the one of the highlights for Water Mini Code Challenge last year for you, being there as as your first one? I mean, just being there for the first time is already a highlight. Right. And, and seeing Brian on his <laughs> jet ski, like, running everything. You know, like, he does a safety protocol before the swim when we get down at Monahan's. Um, I actually picture Brian's uniform in my head. <laughs> yeah, Yellow well, shirt, he had his... wetsuit, yep. yeah. big, big, you know, slather LeBron of sunscreen. Elements, yep, you can't see You can't see anything, like, above <laughs> his eye because, you know, it's all, like, hat backwards. Yeah. You got a good look. Did well, you I have guess, a megaphone? I guess maybe I need to change it up. It's, it's <laughs> no, you looked great, Brian. Stop. He looks great. Um, but but then again, just the vibe and like the people that I met um, being I was just stoked to be home for it because I had a busy, busy summer last year. So the fact that I was just able to be there and soak it up and kind of press pause and do something that I loved for mm-hmm. a day and like forget about everything else. That was a gift in itself. Um, and for people coming down, like not to just like beat a dead horse with the safety thing, but this is an opportunity for you to swim at Narragansett beach that not many people have safety wise. Like most people would not swim from Monahans to the shore. That's not safe. Um, and the fact that you have so many people on paddle boards, kayaks, jet skis, knowing that you're okay, what better way to get out there and just try it, you know, just do it once. And I think that's the coolest part. Echo what Liz said without getting Narragansett surf rescue with this event couldn't happen. I mean, and as, as Brian talked about, he had to, we had to move the date last year. And uh, Narragansett Surf Rescue is so excited to be, uh, be involved in this event. 
they were quick to say, you want to move it a day? Yep, we'll be here. We'll yeah. just move everything to the next day. And uh, they're fantastic. And without them, you know, we wouldn't be able to do this. Yeah. yeah I, mean, can you, I mean, speak a little bit more about Gantz's Surf Rescue here in, in Rhode Island. Because you guys have, you know, yeah, you guys really protect Narragansett Beach and, you know, all the patrons that come. But there's a lot more to just that. I mean, you guys do a lot of training. You work with other beaches, departments, like, this is, uh, it's kind of like the, the big leagues of, of lifeguarding. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's uh, just an incredible honor to have spent my adult life in, in that culture. And um, it all started for me back in the mid-80s when, you know, Dave Pizzullo was on Chair 2, lifeguard captain, and I, <laughs> you know, I, grew up on the beach and just idolized Dave and Dave was just so gracious to bring me and my little cousins in. And, you know, I mean, he, I had a pair of bird wells at like age 11 and, and that was it. It was like, uh, for me, it was just the, the literally the moment that I could get certified, I was g- going to be a lifeguard in Narragansett. And, um, there's just so many stories like that and the culture that, um, that has been, cultivated there and continues to be passed down mm. um over the over the decades and is as strong today as it ever has been it's um I, you know my, i don't know been in a lot of places done a lot of things and mm-hmm. and i've never experienced anything like this and uh you know i just when i get to work at, on a day there and i'm you know, it was Mike Florio, Dave Cannon, and Dave Pizzullo, Joe Vinji, Tom Hiller. Like, it's just, you know, you have these incredible human beings that are literally capable of so much, and their focus and their dedication and their passion is to make that beach the safest beach in the world, and yeah. um, and they've dedicated their lives to that, and it's uh, it's something pretty special. You know, we've been in so many crazy hairy situations together and to know that those are the kind of people that are by your side and have your back it's yeah 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 yeah. no you know having been able to just hang out with you know the crew i don't know have you guys come up with a name for yourselves yet besides just can't serve rescue (laughs) i think that says it all (laughs) that's it right there Um, god only knows what people call us (laughs) (laughs) it's uh it's I'm, you know, it's kind of awe-inspiring to see, you know, the the lineage as you go, th- you know, go down the rope there, and um, the amount of effort that you guys put into that, you know, water Miko challenge, but every day on Narragansett Beach, yeah. right? So, um, <clears throat> has there has there been a moment in the whole process of water Miko challenge, Gansett Surf Rescue, that's really kind of stuck out to you guys? I think there, there's one, the first, the inaugural. Um, Water Manico Challenge was pretty awesome. We, um, we st- started this, founded this event, like right when it was founding Raw Elements and wanted to merge ocean safety and sun safety and these two kind of passions that I had together here and find a way to, to bring something special to life. And um, at the time, we were able, when we launched the very first one, we were able to bring um, two world-class Hawaiian watermen here to Narragansett to host the first event and spend a week here in Narragansett with our team and, and Garrett McNamara and Kamaki mm-hmm. Worthington out of Hawaii, Oahu. And uh, those guys spent a week with us and just, it was such an incredible experience. We did all kinds of training, um, life-saving, new life-saving skills and, and technology that we were unaware of. And we spent a week with all the jet ski training and it's just, just amazing and then to have them there to host the very first event um it was pretty special yeah yeah i I can't think of like a one singular event but to echo what brian said is that there's a culture down there and that when you're when you're going through it and you're training the the younger guards it's that there's a bond that these guys become like brothers and uh even even our alumni and and, uh, uh, guards that have moved on when you see them it's uh, there's a brotherhood there uh and a sisterhood you know not to, to to um uh, eliminate a lot of our uh, highly talented guards, but uh, um, there's a brotherhood and a sisterhood with that group that you've been through so much together, you've worked so hard, and you've carried on uh, this culture uh, and, and tried to pass that along to the next one. It, it's it's hard to walk away from, and as I am 56 years old and still doing it, um, it, it, it can't walk away. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And and it's um it's really it's like a mentorship program, really. And for us, some of the more senior members of the team, we're just so passionate about bringing in these new young people and allowing them to, to kind of experience this and to see them where they start, you know, on day one, Memorial Day weekend at 16 years old as these kind of young, timid, mm-hmm. fierce athletes, amazing, you know, students, just wonderful humans, but still very young and very timid and not not necessarily aware of what they're capable of, mm-hmm. right? And to so watch them go from Memorial Day weekend to Labor Day weekend and, and just in three short months mature into these confident, you know, um, forward young adults that know they can handle themselves in, in any situation, like that is just so, so rewarding for us. And um, and to be able to allow them to be part of, of this culture and know that they're going to have the best summer of their lives and they're going to do things that they never thought they could do and, and be part of this team and make new friendships and bonds and, and again, have incredible mentors like Liz. You know, it's just like you just don't get that. Yeah. In, in in many in many places and, and uh, we're all just fortunate to be part of it. Yeah, and and as Brian talked about, like we really break it down in the beginning for these guards. Like we go over things like how do you blow a whistle? Like mm. Brian Brian spends hours with some of our rookie guards on how to blow a whistle and it sounds silly, like, you know, I know how to blow a whistle, but so many of them need a lot of training in that mm. area. We talk about how to talk on the radio. Uh, we talk about how to set up your chair and how we have a specific way it's set up. And all of these things are done for a purpose and, and for a reason. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think that has carried on uh, year after year after year, and we continue to improve it and work on it. And, and, and so I think we really got a system down now where we take amazing athletes who've maybe, you know, uh, had limited experience lifeguarding and we turn them into superstar lifeguards. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you bring up a good point there with, you know, it's really the attention to detail that you guys take right from how you blow a whistle to how you set up your chair. You know, when you're playing on the ocean, it's those little things that stack up that make the, you know, make it really important as to whether you save that person's life or it's something that could go drastically wrong. Right. And every second counts, every detail. And, um, you know, the fact that you guys are kind of mentoring people to become better people, um, not only just here on the beach, but mind, body, soul. Right. Because that kind of resonates through everything. It really is a testament to what the water mini eco challenge is on one day right right? so you could sign up you could be like you know what i'm gonna try out the swim you know that you're gonna be safe because you got the best people for you and then at the same time like it's you guys really account for every single detail right that whole day is laid out and you know being on the beach last year from the beginning of it all the way to the end you know, you realize like wow there's a lot that goes into this thing yeah and it's incredibly detailed but there is the most incredible team behind it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and again, like I always think about that little girl who came across the finish line and everyone was cheering for her. Everyone was super stoked. And it was just like, wow, this is something that I want to do every single year. And I think a lot of people think yeah. that way. And that's how I got involved. Brian asked me to help out on the first year and come back every year and taking on more responsibility. <laughs> I guess he, he thrown to the fire. Be, I must be doing okay. Cause yeah. he keeps having to come back. So. <laughs> You're doing all right, man. Yeah. yeah. So as we kind of lead into the Water Munico Challenge this year, what are we to expect? What's the what's the layout? What same thing as last year? Any changes? What are we looking for? Well, one one big change that um, is pretty exciting and uh, will be great to to have and to kind of celebrate when the when the main events are done is we're going to have an after party right here at Seacraft oh. on the lawn. You know, That's front. the first I heard of it. This Breaking <laughs> news, <laughs> Dave. Breaking news. That's why we brought you here. <laughs> Amazing. I'll be there. Yeah, so we're going to have a really cool after party here on the lawn at Seacraft. Um, the event, obviously, is Saturday, July 16th, Waterman Eco Challenge. And it starts off with the uh, the swim, swim race in the morning. Kicks off about 8.15 from Monahan's Dock. Mile swim into the beach. Um, and then about 11 a.m., we have the three-mile open water paddle it's a big uh, triangle uh, paddle out from from the beach 
all around out to towards the mouth of the river and then back in to the beach and in that area and the main event areas where the vendor villages um, where all the action happens all the great great vendors with different activities and just just a lot of fun stuff going on yeah yeah well i'm certainly excited for it i'm really glad to be there for this year i'm glad to have you everyone here liz you're gonna be there you know hopefully hop on the mics again do a little something yeah Yeah. and uh you know get you guys back on it and it'll be a fantastic day so for anyone looking to sign up where can they do it how can they get in touch what to expect yeah um Sign up, registration, watermanecochallenge.com, and you can register there for the one-mile swim, the three-mile paddle, or the ultimate, which I hear Liz is doing. The ultimate. Which is the well, one-mile one swim and the three-mile paddle. <laughs> but do I have to show up if I signed up? <laughs> um, so, yeah, watermanecochallenge.com. You can register right up until, I believe it's going to be Friday the 15th at noon, where online registration will close. But then it'll be walk up uh, on site reserva- of registration the day of. So Saturday, 16th at Narragansett Town Beach. Um, registration likely opens about 730 in the morning on site. Awesome. Awesome. Well, for those that are listening, um, would highly, highly recommend coming. And is the after party, is that open for everyone or is that? It is. It is open for everyone. Oh, but, look at that. Um, yeah. But we are partnering with uh, Cheer 2, Bear. Chair two, yeah, local beer. Chair two here. at chair two. Yeah, yeah. Chair two at chair two, and, <laughs> and chair two is going to be sponsoring the after party. So, I think anyone who's attending the event, who's competing in the event, will get some sort of uh, some sort of token, and there'll be an after party here, and it'll be just a great time for everyone to to get together and relax and look at the the ocean, and after following the race, and and just keep the you know keep the good vibes flowing. Awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you for hopping on. Um, thank you, Zach. Yeah, always thanks, great Zach. catching up, and uh, we'll see you at the Waterman Eco Challenge. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Liz. Thank, thank you, guys. Brian. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks, Liz. Thank yeah. you, guys. Yeah. See ya. All right. All right.